All right, everybody, welcome back to the number one television program in the history of the United States of America and the entire world. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown, all three books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. I am here today to review The Song of Homana by Jennifer Robertson. This is book number two in her Chronicles of the Che Suli series. I've got the entire series right here. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight books in the series. I've got them all here. Some of the my favorite fantasy books that I was reading as a young person, and I'm rereading them all for this channel and leaving reviews. So I did review book number one some time ago, maybe about a year ago. That was called Shape Changers. And now we're to book number two, The Song of Homana. Let's talk about the covers first, because you know I love graphic design and cover illustration, and I do really adore these old-timey 1980s covers that Daw Books used to put together. Um, so this one's got a illustration by Julek Heller. And if I recall right, Julek Heller did a lot of illustrations for, like, the a lot of uh, Louis L'Amour books. I think, if I... I think I'm remembering that name correctly. But what I like even more than the just illustration itself, the simple old-time fantasy illustration, is I love the scroll work that's around the edges of these and the little scroll here and stuff like that. And it wraps around and you got the same stuff going on on the backside. And then you put this book in the set with all the other books. And all the spines match up. They look really good. You know, maybe the colors will live a little different, but that's cool, though, because it, it looks like a set that you want to have on your shelf. So anyway, Daw Books gets an A+, plus for just uh, packaging the series. Really cool. So let's talk about the book itself. There's a map inside. It's another thing we can talk about. We Every fantasy novel needs a map. So, um... I appreciate this book a lot for one reason is um, that the the day that I read this, I had attempted to read two other fantasy books by the and these are fantasy books that just came out like within the last year by new fantasy writers and the uh, modern fantasy right and I just I was disappointed I didn't I couldn't get into those books I after a hundred pages of each book I'm like I I'm not interested in this I'm done but I really am in the mood for a fantasy. And these two books that I just attempted to read just set me out of the mood. I just don't, I, I can't, because I didn't like them. And I won't get into the reasons I didn't like them, and I'm not even going to mention what they were. But I'm like, I need to go back and read some old school 80s fantasy to get me jazzed about this genre again, because I think, I think these two books made me hate it. Within just the first couple paragraphs of reading this book, I was healed. I was healed. It put me back in the mood to love fantasy again because Jennifer Robertson's prose was just so much better. And her storytelling was just so much better. And I just loved everything about it. So, for the from the first page, put me straight back into the mood. And um, this is told from the first person narrative. Uh, and usually I don't even like first person narratives. Um, it's got the characters from book one. So the characters from book one have um, are now a little older, and now they're in this adventure here. And um, a few things are going on. Prince Carillon, who is a, and he is a journeying, um, he's a, with a shape-changing uh, Chesu Lee. And now the shape-changing Chesu Lee are sort of these group of magic user type species, people. They're people, a race of people that are magic users. But they can change shapes. They can turn into wolves, lions, whatever. You know, you know, you get that. I mean, you, that's that's one of those fantasy tropes where humans turn into different animals, right? So there's shape changers. Now, um, Prince Carillon, this shape-changing Chase Lee that uh, is his liege man, is named Finn, and they're traveling together. Um, they're attacked by some fighters. We find out early on that both Finn and Carillon are pretty good fighters themselves. So we get a, 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 an introduction right there with a nice action set piece. And then um, what we come to find out is five years have passed. Um, the land of Hobana 
The Homana people are under the rule of an usurp usurper king, a usurper king, okay? And he has driven the land into poverty and um, despair. Um, the Chesuli, the magical Chesuli, have been outcast. They are looked upon as evil and, you know, they need to be like witches. They need to be killed if they're seen or if anybody suspects someone of being a magic user, a shape changer, a Chesuli. That's like, you know, let's hunt these guys down. So they're living as outcasts. And, however, this is super king. He's got his own sort of sorcerers that he uses. They're, they're kind of like the rivals of the Chesuli, and they're called the Ilhini. I-L-H-I-N-I. -I. Don't know how you spell that. How, well, I do know how you spell it, because I just spelled it for you. I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, Ilhini, Chesuli... I could be mispronouncing all of this. But anyway, so we've got magic users that are outcasts, but we've also got sorcerers that are not outcasts that are being used to hunt the other magic users. So we've got a lot of things going on here. We've got a king that's bad for the realm. We've got Prince Carillon that wants to come back and save the realm, but he's got his Chase Ulu friends, and the Chase Ulu are like witches and nobody wants them around, but they're also going to be fighting against the sorcerers. So, um, Prince Carillon is making his return to free his people from the evil tyrant, and um, he's doing this under the um, premise that there's a prophecy that he is sort of, he is like, he's the answer to this prophecy. So there's a lot of really cool fantasy tropes mixed through this book that kind of follow from book one and will follow through the entire series. And it's just cool. I really picture this world. I don't know if you've ever watched the old, um, it was the BBC slash Showtime Robin of Sherwood series that's really kind of got that feel to it, this fantasy world. If you've ever watched that show, these books kind of have that feel to it, in my opinion. I'm just kind of picturing that sort of um, gritty, medieval English landscape as we're in uh the paganistic sorcery that kind of surrounded that show is similar to the paganistic sorcery that we're dealing with here and it's just right up my alley all of that stuff is right up my alley i love this series i'm going to give book two a solid 9.5 out of 10 and i can't wait to read and review the other rest of the series for the channel but that will come in a future folks